Fetch taught me how to play it right. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. People in the neighborhood say this is the house that rock and roll built. Actually, the house has been here probably 35 years. But it's actually more than that. It's a testimony to my life. It makes me feel very proud to see my friends and all the memories that I have in one place. And I'm happy to share that with you. This is Joey Wells from Bill Haley's Comets. And now, welcome to the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. Now, starting our tour, the two labels that I've been involved with are Caprice and Canadian American. The Canadian American label was actually the first. I was an artist on the label back in 1964, had one of my biggest records called Hey Little Moonbeam that I wrote with Steve Lawrence. That picture is Santo and Johnny, and their biggest hit for our label was Sleepwalk. Sold a million copies in 1958. Keep in mind, back in those days, I had no idea that I would end up owning the record label. This one here features the Angels, was one of the biggest groups on Caprice, and that was started by my friend and my mentor, Jerry Granahan, in New York City. I became president of his label back in the 80s and called it Caprice International to uh, make sure that people knew that the new music on Caprice International was what I produced and the old music was Jerry Granahan's productions. Uh, here are some friends of mine that are very dear to me in my corner. Johnny Cash was always very gracious to me. That's a picture we took at the Grand Old Opry. That is a picture of Jerry Lee Lewis and I in my limousine, which is still outside here as part of the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. In that limousine, I carried Bill Haley's Comets, Johnny Rivers, Fats Domino, members of the Drifters and members of the Coasters, and of course, Jerry Lee Lewis. Now, if you'll pan around here on the top, you'll see some of the 60 vinyl records that I made, meaning albums. Uh, Root Music, Ivory Decade, America Made Rock and Roll, America Made Country Roll, uh, Cosmic City Blues, Rockin' in America, Listen to the Voices That Want to Be Free. That particular record on the end is a very rare record because it had Link Ray on it who became a good friend of mine. We wrote all the songs on there together back in the late 60s and it was a time of peace, love and, and happiness and a lot of protest songs about the war. Well, here I am at the old piano, and uh, back in the day, I was probably maybe 12, 13, 14 years old. I was listening to rhythm and blues, and of course it wasn't really cool with the parents, so we had transistor radios underneath the pillows when we went to bed at night. And I listened to the early rock and roll, or excuse me, rhythm and blues music by people like Fats Domino and Ray Charles. And I learned that Boogie Woogie had a certain flair to it that later became rock and roll, and if I could perfect the Boogie Woogie playing, I could dissect it in different ways and make rock and roll riffs out of it, and I used that later in my records and then later with Bill Haley's Comets. So here's what I learned at an early age. The Boogie Woogie Pie. <laughs> I learned you could do it backwards. Then that was cool. Then I learned that you could do it half up and half back. Now, after I got that accomplished, I became a double-barreled piano player, which means using the full octave run on the left hand while you're playing something different on the right. And these riffs are the riffs that came in handy when I played with Bill Haley's Comets, because the bass player would be going junka chunka 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 chunk, slapping the bass, but the notes wouldn't cut through because it was an acoustical bass. So I would cover the notes on the bottom of the piano, something like this.
that's a little bit of the Bill Haley type of style of rock and roll. Many tunes, including Rock Around the Clock, used the barrel boogie woogie on the left hand. Back in those days, if I were a guitar player, I would have had a very hard time of being becoming a legend because there was thousands of them. But because there was only Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, Joey Wells, four of us, I was one of the lesser known, but at least I was in the top four. So the reason I'm saying that is because at an early age I was really in demand to play on people's records. Some of the records that you might remember, I'm going to play the piano on. I'm going to probably bring back some memories of hit records by the artist. You should be able to identify these songs because this is the piano that you heard back in the 50s. <laughs> Remember this in 1965. Judy in the skies. Three-chord song that sold millions of records and never got paid for it because you couldn't find the name of the singer. He was called Question Mark and the Mysterians. This is 96 Tears. <laughs> because it's the master. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I learned to play this when I was 14 years old listening to Ray Charles. <laughs> Thank you.